Welcome back to Nana Mansala. So people say jack of all trades and master of none. So what it takes to be a master of something? For today's talk, we have one of the most renowned resource personnel in higher education and a very known SIMA lecturer, Mr. Siva Bhaskaran. We warmly welcome you to today's program. Um, so we are going to talk about being a master um, and what it takes to be a master. So I would like to ask you the first question, what is an MBA or why do you have to do an MBA? Right. <coughs> um, good evening. Well, MBA, uh, just to answer you directly, it's uh, a postgraduate qualification, I would say. Uh, generally, students who take an undergraduate qualification after their secondary education, once they pursue their undergraduate and then when they want to move on to build up their career, they select an MBA. Mm -hmm. So an MBA is a postgraduate level. Uh, to be more specific and answer your question, let me take a, a little example. Now, if you look at uh, our neighboring country, India, there if you basically a student who finishes their secondary, uh, secondary level studies, they get an undergraduate easily and then immediately what they do is, if you ask what do you want to do next, what's your next plan, without even thinking a second they say I want to do an MBA. So it's just a paper qualification there and uh, they just get it in MBA or, or a master's in ma anything on a master's level they get it. So if you go and look at a typical organization or a work environment where even the boss or the colleagues or the managers or if you look at the hierarchy from top to bottom, easily you can find anyone with an MBA. So it's no big deal there. But however, contrary to that in Sri Lanka, if you ask, MBAs are done and selected, selectedly done in a more specific manner where our students, they first they finish their school education, undergraduate education and then what they do is they start work. And when they start work, they realize to pursue more in their career, they wanted to do something further and that's where they think of doing a postgraduate education and then they select an MBA. That too again, there are a lot of options and uh, but that's how it works. Yeah. Okay, that was a good explanation I think. So secondly, I would like to ask you about, um, okay now there are so many categorizations and specializations in MBAs. Yeah. So uh, how important it is to pick your category or your specialized area in the MBA? Well, <coughs> that's a good question. Uh, actually, when you finish, when you do your undergraduate studies, you generally you pick and choose what is what is more suits you or what is your maybe some people do a particular area of study for their passion. Some people are forced to do by their yeah. parents or maybe some who influences them yeah. to do or even some will do without even knowing a reason whatever they do. Yeah. But however, regardless of that, when they start to do work, when they get an opportunity to uh, prove themselves on what they have learned. At that one point, they realize, okay, whatever I have gained throughout my secondary education and throughout my undergraduate education is uh, not helping me to go further. So that's where, and also at that point, they would have definitely selected what is the area they are good at it. Maybe some are good at marketing, maybe some are good at human resource, maybe some are good at management, some are good at uh, uh, logistics, so at, and some are maybe good at hospitality even now that's an, uh, an, an demanding trend. So at that point they can decide, okay, if I want to further go on this and if they decide that I want to pursue my career on this particular area or this particular path, yeah, that's the point they need to select what am I going to specialize? So a master's with a specialization on that. For example, an MBA with accounting and finance background or an MBA with banking background. Say if you want to, if banking is your passion and if you get into a bank, well, you can go up to a further level in banking and then to move further, to come to a, a let's say, a, a, a vice president level in a bank. Definitely a banking MBA would help you. Or if you want to do marketing specialization, if you want to become a, chief marketing officer of a reputed organization and marketing MBA would do. So similarly, that depends on what career you choose, I think the specialization would help. And Sri Lanka, you have plenty of MBAs with 
plenty of specializations so students who can choose whatever it's relevant for them so simply you have to know your objective and where you are going in your career path uh, in order to select Correct. the best one Correct. all right so then um, if we take uh, now there are so many different mbas uh, offered by different universities in sri lanka yeah. and i have met with uh, quite a lot of people who um, face a lot of troubles when they are picking an mba for themselves right. so what do you think what are the key factors that we have to consider when you are picking an mba it could be the university or whatever it is yeah. all the factors good see uh, again uh, this is something that i think uh, anyone should know what the, what they are like you said once you once you are clear with what is the objective or what is the career you want to go and when you are decided see the next step is what you have to select is okay i'm going to do a mba so what what is important here is basically if you look at an mba uh, it's not just a near paper qualification Definitely. that's where i said the example yeah. i took a, a neighboring country as an example how they look at it but in sri lanka if you look at it it's not been the uh, trend also so it's not a paper qualification it is something which an experience mba is an experience actually personally for me i'll share a little thing when uh, when i did my mba a few years about 5 6 years ago the first question the lecturer asked me is why are you in this class so everybody told different reasons you know i want to we want to study we want to go career we want to earn better but none of them gave the right answer including myself i said i just want to enhance my career that's that's all i said but the lecturer told one thing clearly look you are here to share your experience because at a mba level you are not going to learn anything more theoretical nothing in books mainly of course there are theories but it's not going to be much different from what you learnt already but here it's more application and day to day whatever you do in your organization you deal with your colleagues you deal with your peers you deal with your suppliers and how you handle people handle how you make decisions this is what is the share experience this is in a practical sense what you're going to do here so it's more of an experience so to do that what i would say is the factor regardless of anything first thing i mean for me the priority or i would advise students look look at who is your moderators look at who is going to guide you during the mba look at who is telling you what to do in an mba class because if you don't get the right person to teach you uh i would not use the word teaching i would say is a facilitating if you don't get the right the right person to facilitate you're not going to gain anything because here you're looking at you come to the class you get something and when you go out you have taking something you have to carry something to to do that you have to get it from the right person so moderators or the facilitators or the guiders whoever you call is the first factor second thing it's the environment like you can't be always now the world is keep on changing so we need to adapt change so whichever the institute or whichever the university we are learning with you have to see whether what is what is new are they innovating are they doing something new because we can't be learning on a traditional mode because see a in, in an mba program whether it's a top ranked university or a average university or a bottom ranked university the modules what you're going to learn is not going to change a strategy is a strategy everywhere a marketing is a marketing everywhere it's not going to be changed right because i think the gurus have taught that already so what we have to decide let's look at the moderate whoever the te- people who are teaching you look at what's the technology they are using look at how innovatively they are teaching you and see what is your experience for me when i selected what the mba i did what i did is i looked at only i looked at who am i going to learn with i looked at the crowd because the peer crowd the networking opportunity Definitely. that is very very important mm-hmm. in mba so moderation networking opportunity to present yourself how you could you know you can prove yourself how you can share your experience these are the things look students should look at it it's i don't say it's no point but then again if you look at only for ranking of an mba when you come to university if you look at it uh for me it's just a brand a rank in the university is just a brand because as i said if you want to learn you can learn anywhere and you're not going to learn something new so you pay a very high amount and learn the same thing whereas a student would pay the low amount and learn the same thing so it's just the brand you carry 
and it's 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 the de it's the demand and the uh, how you can get op employed after your career. This is what actually makes it. So basically, it's the moderation and technology and uh, uh, how innovative the university. These are the things I would look at and I would say students look at it. Okay, so basically that's a different point of view to look at it. It's just not a paper qualification, it's an experience. Yes, definitely. Okay, so then um, if we take a look at uh, the target group or the bunch of people who who was uh, doing an MBA. I have seen people in 20s doing an MBA or maybe when they are in their 50s they doing an MBA. Yeah. So what do you think the best age group or the level of career that they have to pursue an MBA? Well, um, see again if an MBA as I explained it's an experience, it's sharing. So if you expect a student who just qualifies from because if you look at the average age category of an undergraduate student in Sri Lanka or anywhere in the world it will be between 19 and 22. So as soon as you qualify with 22 if you go start I mean nothing is going to stop you because you have you have a, 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 an undergraduate qualification certifying that you are qualified. So for the university's requirement it's only generally the university's requirement is the undergraduate. So yes, you can enter, technically you can enter, but if you go and sit in a class of MBA, whereas you are just passed out from the college as an undergraduate and your, whereas your colleagues or your peers sitting with you are all CEOs, CFOs and you know, directors, experienced people who are coming and when the lecturer comes and when they discuss a matter of strategy, they share their experience, they do tell this is how it should work, it may not be the theory in the book, it may not be something uh, written already, it could be their personal experience or it they can tell. But you as an undergraduate student there sitting, can you understand anything? I am just asking you, can you understand? Probably it will be a challenge, yeah. Exactly. So that is where it matters. So there is no age actually, mm -hmm. but I would say experience is matters. A proper university in, in the world or in, in, in UK or in, even in Sri Lanka I have certain universities, they will not entertain students who are not even 25 years of age. So there is no age barrier but however if you want to get a real an experience of MBA you have to have that call time period. You need to finish your qualification, work for a couple of years, then you go start your MBA at 25 then it will help you a lot. That is what I would, uh, that is how I would answer that question. So basically, experience. it makes sense when you know what you are learning exactly. and when you can actually apply it on your work yes. and whatever you do in your career. Um, so let me come to the last question. Yep. Um, so MBA is definitely, uh, it takes a lot of effort to finish it, it takes your time off. Uh, so after all these, what is the transformation that we are actually expecting from an MBA pass out? Is, you said that it's just not a paper qualification, Definitely. it's an experience. Yes. So what is the transformation or the difference that we are expecting from an MBA? Well, see, uh, like when you are going through an ex experience, so this is, this I am sharing with uh, students who have started with us and I am going to give you the, what, what they have come and told us. When they just walk in, we just take them as with their entry requirements, we just take them into the class. But after they go through that one year or one and a half years of experience with the lecturers and when they go out, of course, while they are studying, they have complaints because it's been very difficult because doing an MBA is a commitment. It's a real commitment because you need to know how to balance your time with work, with family and with your classes. It's definitely a challenge because I have gone through that personally, I'm telling you. And but depend uh, regardless of all all that, when you do your work, when you when you go to the class, you know, the lecturers might pick you spot on and ask questions because this is not the tradition way of doing it. Especially when we did our M when we started our MBA back in 2017, uh, yeah, 2017, we only had 17 students in the class. And when they walked in, you know, they were very skeptical about us, about the food setup because uh, we didn't have a traditional setup. There is no uh, uh, ordinary benches and chairs where you can hide behind another person when the lecturer looks at you. 
this is a very open digital environment where we had only five people on a table and it's very visible to everyone. It's very open when you present yourself, everything. When the lecturer picks you up, you have to get up an answer. There is no, there is no chance that you can hide. So when this happened, you know, students were very skeptical. When they walked in first day, they were, what, sorry, this is, looks very strange, you know, whether this is going to go through. Am I, will I be able to succeed here? And, but regardless that they started and when they finished up to one semester, they were kind of, okay, this is something new experience. But when they finish the second semester, they are definitely in, yes, this is something definitely interesting and this is what we wanted. And soon after they finished, when they went out and, uh, you know, they came back during graduation and, you know, what they said to us, uh, thank you very much because this experience has put us out in a, put us out as a different personality. Because when we go out, now our bosses know what is in us and you know it actually helps us to go and present to them and tell what exactly what we have learned so it's more application whatever we our lecturers taught them has really put out so this is again i emphasize that's why i said you have to be very choosy on who is who are you going to learn from one reason i would say this is the reason we our lecturers if you look at the panel we have ceos coos directors and you know, those who have done academically uh, accelerated well in their careers, these are the people we put on to teach because we know this is exactly the question. When you walk out from this class, you need to, you can't just go as you came in. You need to go as a different person and you need to carry that knowledge. More than knowledge, it's the experience and wealth. You should be confident enough to apply what you learn in class and you have to make a difference to your organization. So, what to answer your question, you have to have experience learning when you go out. So this is how I would look at it. Uh, so let me do a small addition uh, to the previous question that I asked. Yeah. So there are MBAs I have seen. Um, there are MBAs for six months, for one year, for one and a half, two, two and a half, and so on. So what is what? What do you have to say about this duration of an MBA? Right. Um, actually. Duration depends on the university's, uh, the university's structure, the MBA module, how they have uh, structured the MBA program. Uh, typically, if you look at any uh, university, state universities in Sri Lanka, those MBA programs are designed for minimum academic year of two academic years. Uh, the reason is actually they, um, they, they actually give a lot of academic knowledge into it more than it's a, um, it's, I wouldn't say it's a practical approach, but it's more of an academic approach. But if you look at the other universities, private universities we call it, which the universities which offer MBAs with affiliation with foreign, mm -hmm. foreign uh, UK and Australian universities, these MBAs are basically uh, offered maximum of one and a half a years and some MBAs are in one year average. That's the trend. Now again, if you look at the foreign universities, I'll, I'll take the foreign universities because I think uh, um, we are also offering something like that because I am not very aware about the state university MBAs, so it's uh, difficult to compare it. But the foreign universities, if you look at it, uh, basically it goes on a credit program. Mm -hmm. So the MB, full MBA is uh, given 180 credits. So this 180 credits can have any number of modules. If you want, you can give 10 modules for 180 credits or if you want, you can give 5 modules or even if you want, you can give 4 modules. So, but a good MBA, a, a very good MBA for you to have a proper MBA experience should definitely contain an element of dissertation, a research element and a dissertation. Without that, if you are doing an MBA means that's something questionable because that is where, that component of dissertation is where how you can express all your ideas, whatever you have learned, your findings, your thesis, your knowledge, everything can be applicable on it. So that has to be there. With that in concern, I think an MBA without, generally goes for 18 months. Uh, this could be challenged or this could be quite con um, contested by someone else. No, it has to be a two year MBA. Yes, I would agree. Again, as I said, it depends on the university's policy. But generally, it's six, one year or one and a half years is a proper MBA. You have to get a gain in knowledge. There are MBAs, as you said, six months. Well, yes, those MBAs, how it happens is these university which is offering the MBA, sometimes they give exemptions for your 
prior qualifications. For example, if you are member of uh, an accounting body, recognized accounting body, or if you have some something which the university senate can accept, they give exemptions and they would ask you only to do the research component so that you can get your final MBA. So it's nothing wrong in this that, but again, it it serves a different purpose. For example, if you are looking to uh, take your MBA qualification as a base qualification to migrate to some country. Generally, the migrate the, the countries which you are accepting would look at a minimum study period of one year, a 12 month study mm -hmm. period. Whereas, if you take a six months qualification and you say I am going to migrate, they do not accept you. This is general, but some countries might accept. It depends on the country's migration policies, but duration depends on the university as well as the qualification structure and how they look at the how they how they actually structure the credit this thing. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot. So, I think uh, we gathered a lot of invaluable information about MBA today. And thank you so much, Mr. Siva Bhaskaran, for being with us today. Um, so, we can conclude today's program. Thanks a lot.